Butterflies are the topic for week five. Today's reading is all about controlling your mind. And then Dr. V's chapter reading is about the botanist viewpoint. Then we'll go down to the studio table and get to work. Beautiful creatures, butterflies. Seems like no two are alike, just like snowflakes. As I was reading Dr. V's chapter for this week, I'm reminded about how our thoughts can control our mind. For example, I had butterflies on my mind, and of course then, in a few minutes, in a few minutes, I had several things I could share with you. A simple exercise is to pick something, like a star, butterfly, dragonfly, a star shape, that is, and focus on it all day. Write it down on a piece of paper and keep it in your pocket. Every time you feel it, you'll be reminded of your item of the day. I scoffed as I picked Butterfly for my focus. I'll be darned if I didn't see 10 or 15 of them that day. From a kite, to a shopping bag, to a real butterfly, to a piece of fabric. If you can control or make your mind focus on something you choose, then mayhaps... You can control your mind to focus on words like happy instead of sad. It's your choice. My contribution to this week's chapter reading from Dr. V's Field Notes book brought many fleeting thoughts to reel through my mind. And of course, it all related back to Sarah, as having her for almost 15 years was the biggest thing I'd ever experienced. One of my threads was a reminder of a child's book we read almost every night when she was two. Curious Kittle Litton was the title. <clears throat> we had it memorized, and to the extent I would switch words around just to see if she caught them. Most popular was to read a word by switching first letter of syllables. Curious Little Kitten became Curious Kittle Litton. Butterfly became Flutterby. I couldn't skip pages without her notice, but I could switch letters around and make her giggle. Then, a few minutes after that thought, I came across a poem by Emily Dickinson. Two butterflies went out at noon, and my thought was, isn't that nice? Without a clue to what the poet really meant. I'm very literal, you see. I read the analysis, and all of a sudden, within five minutes span, that poem reminded me of Sarah. Here's the poem. Two butterflies went out at noon and waltzed above a stream, then stepped straight from through the firmament and rested on a beam, and then together bore away upon a shining sea, though never yet in any port their coming mentioned be. If spoken by a distant bird, if met an ether sea, by frigate or by merchantman, report was not to me. Go read the analysis after you finish today's session, and you'll make the connection just as I did. Or the link will be below. I'm sure there are other learned attempts to analyze what was in Dickinson's mind as she wrote this, but this analysis is what tied my, my reading together. I started out thinking of Flutterbys, and this is where I ended up. Now I'm going to read from Dr. V's book about butterflies. Adult butterflies have large, often brightly colored wings, and conspicuous fluttering flight. I love that phrase, conspicuous fluttering flight. Butterfly fossils date to the Paleocene about 56 million years ago. Butterflies are found worldwide except Antarctica, totaling some 18,500 species. Butterfly migration is best exemplified by the monarch, which is widely known to migrate in the fall to overwintering sites in California, Mexico. And you'll find out why they migrate here in just a minute. But in the United States, several other butterfly species engage in lesser migration distances. Some of these are the buckeye, the painted lady, the purple wing, the great southern white, the cloudless sulfur, and little sulfur. I'd like to meet the people that named these <clears throat> Butterflies are cold-blooded, meaning they cannot regulate their own body temp. As a result, their body temperature changes with the temperature of their surroundings. If they get too cold, they are unable to fly and must warm up their muscles in order to resume flight. Butterflies can fly as long as the air is between 60 and 108 Fahrenheit, although temperatures between 80 and 100 are best. If the temperature drops too low, they may seek a light-colored rock, sand, or leaf in a sunny spot and bask. 
Butterflies bask with their wings spread out in order to suck up the sun's heat. Butterflies and caterpillars are preyed upon by birds, spiders, lizards, and various other animals. Largely defenseless against many of these hungry predators, Lepidoptera, Lepidoptera, Lepidoptera have developed a number of passing ways to protect themselves. One way is by making themselves inconspicuous through the use of camouflage. I guess I am a migrator as well. Join me as I go basking if I get too cold and puddling if I get too hot. Bye-bye. For those who are watching a replay, this was done live on Tuesday afternoon. And if you feel like skipping some of the chit chat stuff feel free to because with covid this is an acceptable social outlet now i'm going to end up making a big old mess but i'm thinking i can reuse the plastic Now, what are you going to paint on? I know. I am too, except for having to go meet the guy that's going to do the surgery on my knee. Ouch. We're not going to do it till spring. And I am working really hard on the field note. And I think what I'm going to do. I got um, Robin McClendon's stencils last week. I was late getting mine, but it's of her scripting. There's one. Well, they got labels on the bottom, so I'll know where they are, where which direction they go. There's the second one. These are from eye stencils, and there's three or four different sizes here. Okay, here's 
the writing in a smaller Anyway, in a smaller size, stop to adjust the light. Another symbol. Another symbol. A symbol. These are six by six. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. And then the three by fives. And that's nice. Lots of these are so, so good. So I'm going to put one of these stencils on my paper. And I'm going to use that one because I'm working small today. Move that book out of the way. I'm having trouble reading today because I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, that smaller size, the, the six by six and the um, three by fives are great. I pulled pumice stone and put my pencil to the side and my pumice stone to the side. <clears throat> and I'm going to use the little makeup brush. And this is Distress Oxide. And I'm just going to cover this whole page And that is just about perfect for what I want. It does take a little more finesse to get these little bitty stencils.
wonder. I'm looking to see if I have a smaller one handy. And at some point I had, yeah, there's a smaller one that might work better. A little bit of a shadow, but it doesn't matter. I think that'll be enough for today. I'm going to dry it. These are butterflies from botanical books, and you can find them all over the internet. And I'm going to go for that one right there. The first thing I'm going to do is draw just a little outline. How big do I want it? Just about the same size is fine. The good thing about butterflies and flowers is that nobody knows what it really looked like. And so I'm going to measure from the tip of the wing. That's my mark. All right. Tip of the wing.
that's not a metal. Just bring it on down. It does not have to be perfect. Y'all can't see it because I can barely see it. So we're in gouache. I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white, a little more white. Very little water, and I'm not going to be too careful where I put the yellow because gouache will go over the yellow and make Once I get one wing in, it'll be easier to make the other one match. And I'm using just the bare minimum of dry a damp brush. Hope everybody's planning on staying safe for Christmas. Yeah. And it's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be.
I got my new little play sewing machine, Joycey. See if I can show you. Isn't that cute? It's a crafting sewing machine. And if you have enough table space, it can just sit there. I gave up on the... Oh, that's blue. It's a good thing I checked. I gave up on the um, little so-and-so that I had. It just got to the point it wasn't worth it. The amount of time I spent on it was incredible. kind of started with the idea of leaving the yellow dot showing, but I think it'd be easier to pop them back in. I have to have a total knee replacement. Don't be stupid when you go to college.
I was actually afraid I was going to have to cancel today. Okay, we are looking at this one. Now what? Got crown. And now I'm going to put a little bit of black on one side, just to try to make it a little more painterly. Actually, it looks like crapola, but... Trying to keep the point of the brush as pointy as I can get it. I'm going to job a little more red. And I believe that's about all of the decoration. Now then, I'm going to come back in on this yellow and soften it just a little. Maybe. So it doesn't look like So it looks a little bit more realistic.
Yeah, let's see how, how close I can get those wing lines. That's good, nothing. This is where you need a brush that comes to a point similar to a watercolor brush where you only have one or two hairs coming out of the end. This is one of the Jerry's Polar Flows that was in their Buy it, try it program. Now, if you've got anything a little bit too thick, just come back in with And the way I get it pointed is just roll it as I pick it up. Where is it? Not too bad. I want to do this one because it's got some color. Okay, pencil. I'm going to start with the head right here. And it comes down the body. Pretty darn close. Okay. This time I'm going to try, and that's got a little, little touch of green in it now.
these spots aren't the same on the same butterfly. Thank God, must have messed up. No, nope, I'm gonna wait on those. They're too small. Now, using gouache straight from a wet pan will give you the best traditional gouache look. It will cover better. And you can work on lighter paper. This is basically just notebook paper that's been dyed. And there's nothing wrong at all if you want to trace. This is why I like using soft gouache.
There is no right or wrong, y'all know that. Need to be the brain one. Put a little bit of yellow ochre on top of that. And some more brown. I mean, no, black. So I need another cut of black. <laughs> Trying to matchy matchy a little bit. Okay, now let's see. Roll your brush as you pull it up. Now. I've got to have 
feel notes ready to go here pretty quick. I'd like to get it going real good before I have to have surgery. Ah, I don't want to do it. That's funky. <laughs> no way you can correct it, though. And again, if you've got some lines that look a little bit too wide, you could fake it. Okay, now we need Yeah, that'll make a cute collage paper, won't it? Here, drink of water. And I think we can fit this little guy right up here. So let's do that. And this one looks like it's brown. How now, brown cow? Let's put you over here. It's kind of golden brown. So I'm going to mix it in some of that yellow that I had. And I'm just going to wing it this time.
Anybody out there in Lurkerville? They ought to have a way that you could just hit a check box. Right now we got that main body done, so let's just If you find your brush is dragging a little bit, just get it wet and wipe it off. Then I'll make it damp enough to keep working. I'm going to put a little bit black. Some red. And a little bit of black. To 
But we know how to fix that, don't we? It's a good idea to wait till the black is dry. Until the yellow is dry. All righty. So we've seen Robins. Um, let's take a picture while we're here. New stencils. We sell my new sewing machine. I've already started a little video on it. And the gouache. So here you go. Kind of cute. And I like my background. That's what happens when you come into the studio without, without a plan. I ran out of air. And I'm doing this because Azure, I think, told me to. Now see this paint right here? I could still use that. It'll still wet up. Oh, the little thing I was looking for is right there. All right. For anybody out there in YouTubeville, let me take a quick check. Say hi to everybody. Well, it's a quiet day. It's okay. Hello, everybody out there. I'm going to call it quits for today. Just a little short. Well, I'm still an hour and a half. I like it. Okay, guys, everybody have a good Christmas, and please stay safe. COVID's getting worse instead of better. And they're saying from the CDC that small groups of people are the biggest transmitters right now. So that means family that you don't quarantine with. So, please be safe. All right. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.